Hi, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another debunking video. Well, we have a new infectious disease on our hands, except it's not really new. Monkeypox and the virus that causes it have been around for a very long time. It's been endemic in Central and West Africa for decades. There was an outbreak in the US in 2003, and there have been several sporadic outbreaks in various countries over the years. This is all to say that there is a good amount about this virus that we already know. We already know how it behaves, we already know how it transmits, and we already even have vaccines and antivirals in order to combat it. So we're not going in blind like we were with COVID, which was caused by a completely new virus. But all this previous knowledge is not stopping the people who like to get on their shows and give their hottest takes about whatever topic people are chatting about these days without even reading the history and science behind it, and as a result, looking completely stupid in the process. So today we're going to be talking about one of those people named Michael Knowles. Now I'm focusing on him, but his views actually represent a lot of the biggest problems concerning the rhetoric surrounding this virus currently. So after I debunk a lot of the stupid stuff that he says, I'm going to talk generally about what you should know about monkeypox, and then point you in the direction of experts who will tell you much more about it. Without further ado, let's get into it. While everyone was focusing on the big headline news, most people missed the most disturbing political news story to come up in a very long time, care of CDC director Rochelle Walensky. Two little kids just came down with monkeypox. Yeah, that's because monkeypox can infect children, as we have seen with pretty much every outbreak of the disease that has happened in the past. Maybe you would know this, Michael, if you bothered to read up on the history and science of this virus. You have to read these things before you actually go and spew nonsense on your show. Because reading is what? Fundamental. That's right. That's right. I should use that clip more often. Anyway, he gets worse, so let's continue. A disease that you pretty much only get from having sexual contact with gay men who go to orgies, and the kids are doing well? According to recent research in the New England Journal of Medicine, 95% of monkeypox cases have been transmitted through sexual activity. 98% of infected people are gay or bisexual. Okay, so because Michael has neglected to read and educate himself on this topic, he's saying some stupid things here. What we're seeing with monkeypox right now is a temporary epidemiological trend where most of the cases are occurring in men who have sex with men. However, this is not a rule for the virus. This is just reflecting human behavior and some convenience that the virus had in having this outbreak in this particular group. Monkeypox is an infectious disease. There is no infectious disease that only afflicts gay people. There never has been and there never will be. People have made this mistake more than enough times in the past that they should be able to learn from history, but like we said, Michael doesn't read. So he wouldn't know that this same misconception has happened before with MRSA and with HIV AIDS. It's also happened in a lesser known example, which is smallpox. Except with smallpox in the early 1900s in America, it wasn't gay people, it was poor black and immigrant people who were accused of being the ones who could only be infected with smallpox, and thus quarantines and vaccinations and all those things should only be in those groups because there's no way it could cross the color line and infect white people. But it did, and they were wrong, and we haven't learned our lesson apparently. Just a quick sidebar here, in addition to that racism and misunderstanding of the early 1900 smallpox outbreaks in America, that was also a time when those infected with smallpox and those around them were forcibly quarantined and literally vaccinated at gunpoint by teams of doctors and police. And the only smallpox vaccine that we had back then was literally scrapings from the lesions on the underside of a cow that were rubbed into an open wound on your arm that was made by a bifurcated needle. Man, if the people complaining about vaccine mandates today existed back then, I think they would explode. If this is super interesting to you, then you can read a ton more about it in this book, Pox, An American History by Michael Wilrich. It's seriously an awesome book, and it offers some great perspective to several things happening today. Anyway, moving on. 
So now we're seeing this stigma and finger pointing again with monkeypox. People are instead making the group of people getting infected the enemy instead of making the virus the enemy. And that is just a huge mistake born out of fear and ignorance. If you understand monkeypox, you understand that it is a virus that spreads primarily through close contact. This is because the virus causes open sores or pustules on your skin, and those pustules are filled with virus. So if an infected person has those lesions and touches them and then touches you, or if you're just in close contact in the same room for a long time, hugging, if you kiss, if you cuddle, and yes, if you have sex, then those are all opportunities for the virus to spread. Monkeypox could also spread from fomites, or large liquid droplets that come out of your mouth. This can happen because lesions or sores can form actually in your throat or mouth, and again, those lesions and sores are what shed virus. The virus for now is taking the opportunity to spread mostly through sexual networks of men who have sex with men, but that could quickly change, and in fact, we're seeing it change right now. We are seeing more children becoming infected with monkeypox, we are seeing more women and more straight men becoming infected. That's because this virus is not limited to one sexual network and one group of people. It's an infectious disease, and if we ignore it long enough and don't stop its spread, it's going to spread to other groups. The virus could easily enter other networks of people who have close contact with each other regularly. This includes swingers and sex workers. It also includes children at daycare. It also includes wrestlers for schools. All of these groups of people could be vulnerable sources for the virus to latch onto. So it's in our best interest as a society to stop its spread and care about each other. For God's sake, why is that so hard? But of course, we have people like Michael Knowles who want to say stupid stuff like this. Some activist groups are trying to blur this reality and they're claiming that monkeypox is not a sexually transmitted disease or they're claiming that it's affecting all sorts of other people, not just one group in particular. The data just don't back that up. Not even close. Remember when we were supposed to follow the science? Yeah, Michael, if you followed the science, you would understand that there is no reason why the virus that causes monkeypox would be limited to gay people. And you would also see that it is not limited to gay people. It's spreading to other groups as we speak. But he's just here to spread bigoted ideas that are born out of fear and ignorance and a refusal to read the science and history, because that's what brings him the big bucks on his show, apparently. So, good for you, bud, I guess. Whatever. A sane society would be demanding answers here. They would be interrogating the men who gave the kids this STD. No, Michael, a sane person would educate themselves on a topic before they go spewing whatever thought they have about it on their show. But you didn't do that, so here you are. And even the CDC is saying they got it from these gay guys who, with, without answering any of the questions. What, what's the relationship here? What do you mean household transmission? How did they, don't, no, it's okay. Never mind. Don't ask any questions. It's fine. You can totally ask questions, Michael. Yours are just easily answered. Household transmission is just what it sounds like. If you live in the same house as somebody, you're probably going to be in close contact with them. And monkeypox spreads through close contact. So if you're in the same room with someone for long periods of time, if you hug them, if you have sores in your throat and you're breathing a lot around them, or if you're cuddling them, kissing them, or just any of that, that can spread monkeypox. All of this has been known for a long time. Right now, this, the CDC, the public health authorities, are trying to have it both ways. They're trying to scare everybody about monkeypox and everyone's risk of getting monkeypox, but they can't get past the scientific facts, which is that virtually everyone who's getting this is getting it from promiscuous gay sex. So then when they say, well, actually, even kids can get monkeypox, the obvious next question is, how? Close contact, Michael. It shouldn't be hard to understand. Okay, that's enough from him. Ideas like his have no place in science. They should be quickly shown to be stupid, debunked, and then dismissed because they are useless. They are counterproductive. They only spread hate, stigma, and misunderstanding of something that should be addressed with science, with understanding, and with compassion. He has none of those things. Monkeypox is not a virus that we need to panic over. It is a virus that should be able to be contained if we do the right things. But people like Michael Knowles and politicians like him saying these stupid things are counterproductive to that goal. 
People like Michael should not be mad at gay people. If anything, they should be mad at the lack of political will to solve this problem. Science has already produced a lot of the tools that we would need to tackle an outbreak like this, but we were more set up for smallpox and not monkeypox, which made it so that there was a lot of red tape and bureaucracy around the tools that we currently have to fight a virus like monkeypox. With the right political will, this process could have been sped up and we could be in a much better place, but that didn't happen. The response was fairly slow. I'm sure you might have heard a lot of talk about the vaccines that we have against smallpox that could be used to fight monkeypox. There is historical evidence that these vaccines are effective against monkeypox because the virus that causes monkeypox and the virus that causes smallpox are similar enough that the tools that we have to fight one should be effective against another. But the stories surrounding the bureaucracy and the slow rollout of these tools have been talked about extensively by other science communicators, and I'm going to link their content in the description below so that you can go check it out for yourself. Seriously, you'll learn a lot more listening to them than you will listening to this video. But the thing I'd like to add to what they have said here at the end of this video is that if you want these problems to not happen in the future, if you're tired of these slow and inadequate responses to viruses like SARS-CoV-2 and monkeypox, then the best thing to do is to advocate for more science funding, more public health infrastructure. Demand that from your legislative politicians. The best way that we can develop new tools to actively combat emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases is to invest in science so that we have the technology and the understanding to use those tools properly. And that can only come about by funding basic research and having a good public health infrastructure. So if you care about these issues, that's what you should be demanding from your politicians. More funding in science and public health infrastructure. I'm going to put some links in the description if you want to learn more about it, and you can always message me with questions if you want to know more. Also linked in the description is going to be all of the science that I talked about in this video and a ton of other information about monkeypox that you should definitely check out and read for yourself. Because reading is what? Fundamental! I love that clip. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and Michael Knowles, if you're interested in talking to me, the door's open. Again, as always, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.